Hello, and thank you for joining us. Today we'll be going over the DocStar Eclipse 101 session. Here we'll be talking about the feature functionality of the DocStar Eclipse product. First, we'll be showing you the basic architecture of the system. As you can see here, from any internet browser, whether it's Microsoft Internet Explorer, Edge, Chrome, Mozilla, Firefox, or any iOS-based browser such as Safari, you can access documents directly from those browsers or any tablets or mobile devices. We'll start off with some basic functionality as it relates to the interface. Here you'll see on the left side is our navigation bar. The first step is our index inboxes. Inboxes are simply, essentially temporary storage locations. This is where we can onboard documents that have mixed sorts of documents that will allow you to then bring them into the appropriate folder. Folders can be created simply with a right click, assuming you have the right permissions, as well as the ability to rename and delete. The highest level of security is the folder. Where when we get into the actual document level uh, functionality, we'll see how we can change document access within that particular folder. Most security set with a specific security class, but you can add individual users. What we call ad hoc users that have groups that have access to this particular folder set. Full gives you full permission, the ability to add to a folder, the ability to apply additional security classes for other folks, as well as deleting, modifying, version control, redaction, content generation such as printing or emailing, uh, as well as the ability to export or import uh, output specific documents. Once you click on a folder, it will show you all the items within that folder. You can then sort simply from the grid control here by uh, clicking on the column header. At the bottom, you'll notice the workflow functions. These typically allow you to receive alerts when an incoming document arrives that has an associated workflow or an approval. We'll come back to that process. At the top here, you'll notice the ribbon bar. You know, the home tab here allows you to see our Buzz Space. Buzz Space is essentially just a HTML website that you can embed. You can embed multiple websites depending on the company. Across the top here, we then have the retrieve button. Uh, this is where we can select very specific searching parameters. The items and locations button is where we can select a specific folder we want to search on. So maybe we want to look in accounting for content type AP invoice and then hit the search. And this will return anything that has to do with that. You'll notice that nothing returns because my AP invoices are in a subfolder called AP invoices. Once I hit the search, it returns everything in that particular search. Now we can create and store that particular search uh, by using this box here. So I can say AP invoice search. And by doing that and then selecting the save button, it will then show up in my drop down list of available search items. You also notice that it does show up here on the right of the search button on the Google type search bar, you'll notice that that also searches as well, same way. Uh, you'll see the limit of how many items get returned in the list. You can increase that or not, uh, decrease or increase. Typically it is 25 by default. You also notice the column chooser. This allows you to show different columns within this particular grid. It is global, meaning that doesn't change per folder or content type. You always have the same folders based on that parameter. You can search for certain fields, so caller ID, something like that. You can simply add that over here or simply hit the minus button to remove that. The list of actions, as you see here, uh, this is uh, a number of things you can do once you have uh, documents. Uh, this uh, we'll come back to in the following section. Additional, if you did want to search for AP invoices, you'll notice these uh, two additional panels. So we can search by an amount or status field. So for instance, if I wanted to search for 
call AP invoices where the status is equals to approved. For instance, uh, I can search and retrieve specific documents. You'll notice in this case I don't because all of my AP documents, if I get rid of my look in here, I should return uh, a number of documents with that particular status. In fact, I think I'm using my invoice status, not my standard status here. Okay, again, these can be saved for searching. Okay, so uh, you also have your text capability here, so I can also look for Acme Company. If I do Acme Company, this allows me to uh, search specific items that are related to an AP invoice in Acme, and this will return those documents here. Um, you also notice when I do that and I type in Acme, there's a suggested vocabulary. These are some uh, common values that are seen in the system that might be applicable to you. And obviously, if I click on that, it then puts it into the word phrase box. You can also use the uh, asterisk. This is a little wild card. So it allows you to look for, for instance, the word Acme, Acme Company, Acme Check, or anything like that. Typically, we don't uh, need to use this detailed of search. Uh, when we get in here and I just remove all these parameters, we also could just do that right from the Google search bar here. So if I type in the word Acme and hit Enter, you'll notice that it returns all of my Acme documents, invoices, checks, etc. Now I can add additional words like PL for packing list here. And in this particular case, it will only show me the Acme packing list. So you can concatenate a number of different terms here uh, to find different sections of a document. All right, we'll come back to some of those functions there uh, when we get to the searching section. Okay, so our capture tab, you'll notice here, this is where you're going to do all your desktop scanning. This is also where you're going to do your batch importing and the ability to browse out and grab documents that may be on your hard drive. So the first one here is the scan. You'll notice uh, whether uh, I have it folded, uh, expanded or not, uh, it's blue. Uh, if I expand it, it's yellow. If it's gray, that means that this client is not installed. To enable scanning or the ability to use our office integration, you do have to have this little globe in your bottom corner here. This is the client interface. This allows you to drive the desktop scanner, whether using a cloud or an on-premise solution. You'll notice in my capture tab, this is the scanner I'm using. So you have to set that within our caption tab. We support all Twain and ISIS-based scanning. You'll notice a number of different functions here in terms of split methods, um, you know, various other types of things, duplex scanning. Uh, so these can be changed on the interface here, which I'll show you, but these are some of your default values. Uh, so for instance, as you see here, the various types of image enhancement things like despeckling, skewing, enabling duplex scanning, which is both sides as well as the auto size detection. You have uh, a number of s typical splitting capabilities with the barcode uh, license, which is an add-on feature. You can split based on barcode, barcode change, or a specific barcode prefix, as well as the ability to s separate based on every page. So if you have 10, 10 page scan, you want each one to go into its own individual 10 single pages, then you select single pages or you can use blank page. That just uses a blank piece of copy paper to separate your documents. Okay. Uh, you can also enable that here. So you have a number of different uh, profiles you can enable, but if I hit the edit button, it shows a similar dialog. It pulls in all of your defaults from your client application. Again, very similar. One of the nice features is the auto size detection, which allows you to scan and mix sorts of documents. Say so if you have legal and letter and you know, uh, kind of wallet size picture uh, that you need to scan all at one time, you're going to use the auto size detection. If you do not enable this and you, they're either smaller or larger than a letter size, it, the scanner will jam and will not uh, clear. So just enable that. The advanced settings button will launch the, in this case, the Panasonic scan interface for additional type configuration. 
All right, so uh, additionally, you'll see here uh, the separator capability as well as the direct and preview. If I hit direct, that's if you don't want to have a preview of the image while you're scanning it. If you do want a preview, you select that. The prompt to continue will allow you to <clears throat> excuse me, scan in a number of pages. But before it submits all those pages, it'll prompt you to add additional pages. So for instance, if you had a large packet of 100 pages, but you can only fit 50 pages in at a time in the scanner, you'd scan the first 50 pages, enable the prompt to continue, you'll load the additional 50 pages, you'll end up with 100 page document. All right, the import. Import can be, uh, you know, typically done in a couple different ways. In this particular case, it's just a simple browse. So if I hit the browse here, this will allow me to browse out. I can select multiple documents at one time, or I can just set a single one. If I do not have the client installed or working, and this is grayed out at the top, it will only allow me to select one document at a time. So when I select this particular document that I want to import, you'll notice that it shows up here in our grid below. This allows me to make some changes. So for instance, if I wanted to bring in multiple documents and merge them together, I can do that here, or delete pages. So before I actually bring it into the system, there's some list of options that I can initiate. Okay, so uh, in this particular case, we're going to be introducing this workflow concept. Um, for those of you on the legacy Docstar platform, you're going to notice that the workflow kind of replaces the templates function. So content types and workflows, they work together. In this particular case, as you notice, when I selected the AP invoice content type, it automatically applied this workflow. So when we get into the admin function of this particular Eclipse product, we'll dive a little bit deeper in how that works. In this case, when I submit the document, you're going to notice anything with a workflow function is going to show up in our workflow queue. And it's also down here in the bottom. It's going to show that a workflow notification. So the workflow link here will highlight. Once I refresh this page, it will highlight with a little one next to it. That indicates that there is a, a workflow available. Okay. So when I click on the workflow here, you'll notice um, I have uh, my work items. Okay, so work items essentially are items that either you or somebody has to attend to. Okay, so you'll see here uh, from the queue, uh, I am an admin, so I can see everybody. Uh, but when I go to my Brent Wessler queue, you only see that one invoice we just brought in. So holistically, somebody can see anything that is uh, related. Uh, to themselves. You can further segment that by the physical workflow. Okay, so if you only want to see AP invoice approvals, you can select that. If I select this uh, workflow here, you're going to notice that goes away because it's an AP approval. So if I go back to my AP approval, you'll see that that particular workflow shows up. At the bottom here, you'll also notice the approval requests. This allows us to um, see any request for approval either by yourself or by another member. Uh, you also notice there's a, also a dashboard item here, which I don't typically always use. But this just allows you to see who has what and how many items are in the queue. It gives you kind of a holistic view of what's going on with the system. As you can see, I can move these, these around and all sorts of different things. Okay. Now, uh, every dialogue, or essentially every tab, has its own list or action window. You're going to notice here on the right, there's a little bit of a limited one as it relates to the document. You're going to see that also in the results grid, as well as in the work items. So some of the things you can do here is a view. So if you want to open up multiple documents at one time, you can select the view. You can simply check off the box and then hit view or simply just double click on it and it will open up on the screen for you. Okay, so uh, other functions here, uh, you do have this little edit. When I hit the edit, it allows you to edit the metadata here. And then I can say, you know, for instance, get rid of that, AP invoice, and then hit the little save button. That allows you to modify that information pretty quickly. 
Uh, the type obviously shows PDF, so we know what it is. Uh, we can also email the document. We're going to get in a little more detail into the email functionality. You can see all the power of the new email function. You don't have to have a Mappy Outlook client. We'll get to that when we get to the edit output section. Uh, we can also modify the security of this particular document. Um, we, we'll, we'll discuss that a little bit more when we get into the document section. You have the ability to set, save a copy, which basically downloads or exports the document, and it will prompt you either for a TIFF PDF or native. We'll get into that in a little more detail. Setting due dates allows you to set an automatic workflow that prompts a user uh, when a document hits a specific due date, and you can get an email notification on that. So when I click here, you can set the particular due date and then it will automatically show up in your workflow queue uh, when that document is due. Watches, this does allow you to select the different colors that show up in the, or the kind of the row watch. Uh, it's a color coding kind of thing that you can enable. It allows you to give more visibility. Uh, certainly deleting documents and as as with anything in a work item queue or your queue, you can change the assignee of a workflow. So for instance, this came in and it shouldn't be for me. It should be for the admin user. I can then reassign that to somebody else. You also have the ability to terminate, reset, or change the workflow. So there's a number of different actions you can initiate here, but this is basically your work box. Okay, so uh, in this particular case, you'll also notice that there's this little cog wheel at the top. This allows you to change the workflow notification areas. Okay, so this is, you can uh, kind of customize uh, what groups or users can see what, um, maybe certain common work filters. So I always want to see uh, this particular AP invoice. I, I don't want to see any anything else, a uh, number of uh, particular results. Uh, and then, you know, any type of reporting that you'd like. Uh, so you can define this. We're not going to go into too much detail here, but what columns you want to display. And then you can run that particular report, and that can run on a time basis. All right. Um, now if we uh, move to the right here, uh, you'll notice uh, we have the reports and the forms area. These are two add-on modules. We're not going to be going into too much detail on that on a 101. But this does allow you to run different reports based on, you know, approvals and pretty much any metric in the system, how long it took, um, user activity, the approval workflows, um, who it went to, uh, as well as our new forms web module. So any web forms that you'd like to initiate, they can all be configured here uh, right within this particular interface. And it's a nice drag and drop type functionality. You can drag the items in, and then there's a public link that essentially gets generated so people can fill in that information. So you see here this create public link. All right, uh, now typically I'm not going to go too much into the admin because, again, this is an admin function, but you'll notice here this is where you set up most of the database design elements. We went over simply right-clicking and creating folders, <clears throat> but the biggest element is the content type builder. So the content type builder is how we use custom fields, and we add them to the particular document. So uh, you could do this in a number of different ways. Uh, I've done it by document type. So you'll notice I have an AP invoice document type, for instance. And when I select that, all of my custom fields show up. Fields are created here in the fields dialog, which I'll go into. But you can also ad hoc create fields. So if I wanted to add a new field, I can hit the Add Field button here, which will allow me to type in some additional information, uh, maybe like a distribution code. And I can type that in. You can use spaces or whatever you'd like. And then the type. We're going to get into some of the data types um, as we discuss the fields. When I hit the Save, it then adds that here to the top of my list. I can move these up and down. This will be how it shows up in the user interface. You also notice a number of different uh, white boxes here, as well as a link and an eyeball kind of thing. Uh, this is uh, ideal for things like uh, data linking. So for instance, if I want to pull a customer list into this field, I would use a data link. We're not going to go too much into data links today. It's more of an advanced topic. Um, but you also see to the right the ability to have these link functions, or essentially the ability to link this to a related document. 
So an AP invoice and a packing list and a purchase order can all be linked through this purchase order number, or in our case, the invoice and the check number. And we'll go into a little more detail on that. Uh, the eyeball either shows or hides that field, depending on what it is. Okay, so I'm just going to close that. All right, the fields, this is where you can create the fields. Uh, you saw how we ad hoc created a field, but this is typically where we're going to do that. Again, distribution type, something like that. And then we can select uh, what it is. So date, uh, that's kind of obvious. Uh, if I do that, it's going to give you a different format, long date, short date, so you get a, dump, a number of different formats. Date time, that's going to put a time in there. Uh, so if you do need the time, uh, otherwise use date, it's a little more flexible. Uh, decimal is where you want to do dollar amounts, where you have a decimal place. Integer is always numeric, so I always have uh, numbers, no letters, or anything like that. A list is where you have a drop-down list. So if I select that, you'll notice it adds this field here of all the available drop-down lists. The drop-down list here uh, can be configured. We'll, we'll go into that and show you how that works. A long integer, and then a text field. So text is your kind of default. This is a typical alphanumeric, letters and numbers, spaces, or anything like that, as well as a true-false, which is a new feature. Okay, so once I'm done with that, I can just simply hit the Save button, and you're going to see distribution type shows up on the right, the left here. All right, so this um, that's how you create all the fields. Uh, now, you do have this concept called field groups. Field groups will do allow you to select multiple fields and tie them together in a tabular data grid. Okay, so these are all the fields that are available up here. You're just adding them into a table grid. Okay, so in this particular case, on something like an AP invoice, where you have part number and quantity and unit price and extended price, and you need to kind of bind that row together, this is what you're going to use. I'm going to show you how that works. All right, um, so I'm going to go over to my list function here, and then you can see here we have a, I'll call it a distribution list. So if I do a distribution list, and I'll just do something simple, but we do have two options here. Read only means you can't add to the list, meaning not an admin, but an end user. Um, and I'm going to make that not read only, and I'm going to do sort, meaning alphanumeric. So if I do A, B, uh, G, uh, D, you're going to see that this will auto sort itself. I'm going to hit save here. That's now saved in the list. And you'll see the distribution type here. So if I want to, I can then go and assign that to that particular field. There's a couple ways to do that. I can go over to the fields and I have my distribution type here. I'm going to select list. And by default, it will then allow me to bind that to the distribution list. And I can hit save now. So when we add that, it will then actually prompt us for that particular value, A, B, D, or G. Some other things that you can do here, obviously a lot of these are admin generated, but the ability to apply stamps, uh, this is where you can apply either text or image-based stamps. You're going to see that when we get to our uh, section for, um, I'm just going to grab our PIF logo, PIF logo. You can put any any type of uh, PNG or JPEG, and then I'm going to hit Save here. And you're going to see the PFI, PIF logo here, and it gives you a little preview. So when we go to annotate documents, we'll allow us to apply those particular stamps. Okay, um, so that's about all I want to go over it here in the admin. Now I'm going to go to the far right, and you're going to notice in this little clips section a couple things. One, you can switch between different default companies. So company is a mutually exclusive data source. Things like HR, other subsidiaries, you can define multiple companies. Uh, check with us on that specifically if that's of interest to you. Uh, it's great to um, make different parts of your business mutually exclusive so people can't see one from the other. They're completely separate. But you're going to notice the user preferences. This is where I'm going to select a number of the things that are specific to my workstation. Essentially, uh, we can, uh, upon submission of a workflow, it can, as you can see here, either submit and stay, or when I hit submit, move to the next section. 
uh, as well as all the different feature access functions uh, as it relates to printing and emailing and kind of how you want things to show up within the interface. There's quite a few here. Um, and you can see all those particular options. So, All right, um, so as we uh, now kind of did the user interface kind of design here, uh, what we're going to do now is go through a typical capture query edit and output type demonstration. Okay, so uh, the first thing, uh, we're just going to go to our home tab here. Uh, you're going to notice I do have the capture tab. I can execute a scan, and you'll notice based on the content type, it's going to allow me and it will tell me where it needs to go. So by selecting the content type, you'll see the folder at the bottom. So when I scan in an invoice, it's going to go to this folder. Additionally, as your legacy customers of the Docstar system, uh, templates. So instead of having a template, you have a defined workflow. So when I capture the invoice, it automatically applies this workflow. And that's going to do a number of different things. And we're going to come back to that. OK, so in this case, what I'm going to do is go outside the system, start with uh, Office. OK, so I'm going to open up Outlook here. And if I want to, I'm going to um, select a specific document. In this particular case, um, a document that has two documents here. And you're going to notice we have this Eclipse button. So I can hit the Save to Eclipse. Uh, essentially, this uh, Eclipse login uh, add-in function is done all through your client. You'll notice when you open up your client here, there's a modules function, and then you have your office integration. You simply click on that, and it'll install. Same thing with the print import, which we're going to demonstrate as well. It's like a virtual print driver. Uh, certainly, PIF can help you with that, either through our support or calling us directly. In this particular case, because it's an email, I'm going to select that it's a correspondence. You'll notice we can read some of the header information here. I'm going to use the contract party Eclipse just for um, I'll do Eclipse 3 just for um, purpose. And uh, we can then also apply uh, different workflows. In this case, I'm not going to do any workflows. But you'll notice that the correspondence content type uh, by default is going to go to the correspondence folder. So when I hit Upload, okay, that's now in the system. If we go back to our correspondence right at the top, we're going to see that particular document. Now you're going to notice when I click on it, the preview is blank. So what's happening now is that native MSG file is what we store. That's a native Outlook file. But we render it to a PNG file. This allows you to view this document from any type of browser without that native application. Okay, so once I hit the refresh button here, you'll notice within a few seconds it should render that particular document. And as you can see there, yes, that document is there. Okay. Some other things we can do, when we're in this particular document, we can also print, file print. And when I print, I can select the Eclipse PDF driver. So if you're on a web page, you're on a, uh, another ERP system, and you want to get something into the system very easily, simply select the Eclipse PDF driver, and it will prompt you the exact same way as I just showed you. Uh, you select the content type and put it into the system. The only difference is, this will make a PDF of the document. There's attachments. It will make a PDF of the attachments as well. In the Office integration, it actually creates a physical native file format. All right, so some other things we can do. Uh, if we are in Word, I'm just going to open up a standard NDA contract here. and uh, We also have that full functionality. But in this particular case, what we're going to use um, in this NDA is I'm going to use this for version control. So you'll notice a little different here. We get this check-in area. We're going to come back to that and show you how that works. Uh, but I'm going to save this in. Uh, so I'm going to select Save to Eclipse. But I'm going to select that it's a contract. In the contract party, I'm going to type in the word Eclipse 3. And I'm going to enable what we call Convert to Text. So this allows us to take not only these key fields, an index, but the entire document is going to be text searchable. Okay, so we're going to show how that works. So when I hit upload here, that is now in the system. You notice how this check-in button is all grayed out. And we're going to show you how that works because it 
there wasn't anything checked out to check in. All right, so we're going to close that down here. And then we're going to go back in and we're going to look for the phrase Eclipse 3. And this is going to bring back a few things. Well, you notice one thing is, is that um, you'll see here in this particular document, it actually looks Eclipse. So you notice I put Eclipse 3. So it finds not only Eclipse, but Eclipse 3. Uh, and here's the email that we had looked at earlier. And then here's the NDA contract. Again, it's rendering that particular document in this case. Another approach and uh, a way to find these documents is certainly through what we call a, um, a keyword search. So if I wanted to look for the phrase disclosing party, we can use uh, the quotes here, uh, and hit search, it's going to find uh, all available documents for that, in this case the NDA that we had just put in. Another approach is simply just clicking on the contracts folder here on the left and you'll see all the available documents uh, show up. Um, now when I open up this particular NDA contract, the Clips 3 here, you're going to notice we have this uh, in the, this is kind of the document viewer control here. And you're going to notice a few things. Um, one, the workflow. In this particular case we apply to convert to text and it's just telling us that there's a complete status on it. Uh, you'll notice uh, as we move through the workflow in our AP invoice process, uh, this will actually prompt us for some questions or a button, you know, like an approval or submit button. Uh, we have a instant messenger type thing. Uh, so like for instance, we can type the word hello here. And when I type back and forth with somebody, uh, that shows up in my history here, my chat history. So the history bar allows you to see everything that happened in the system the entire system, including the chat, approvals, and then obviously the chat area. All right, um, additionally, uh, because we are looking for uh, the word disclosing party, we can also uh, find related documents. So for instance, we had that email that was in. You'll notice how the email is automatically linked to that, and that is done through, again, our content field. You'll notice in this contracts field, I use the contract party and I've enabled this particular section, in this particular case, the link related. That's how it knows to find the email. Okay, so um, some other things here. Uh, we have uh, the content type fields. Again, so the content type, as we reviewed earlier, is a collection of fields that describe the document. You can change that on the fly. If I do checks, you'll notice how it changes the different fields. It keeps that core data field that you enabled. Uh, if I go back to contracts, you'll see that moves it back in. Um, you can uh, add or hide fields as necessary using the cog wheel here to show or hide fields. You can also add fields. So for instance, if I wanted two contract parties, I can simply come in here and contract party and I can do ABC. And now I can search contract party by ABC or Eclipse. So we call multi-value fields. We can also add additional folders. So for instance, in this particular case, if we want to have this contract in our standard contract folder, but also add it to the audit folder, you'll see that we can do that. And hit the save button. You'll notice by adding the word ABC as a contract party field showed us some other common NDA documents that are related to it. All right, so um, once you're in the document, in this particular case, uh, you can right-click over here on the on the pages and the thumbnails on your right, and you can see that we can reorder pages. Uh, so the ability to move, you know, obviously I'm on page one. I'm not going to be able to move that before page one. So you can select, um, you know, how you want to move it around. You can also uh, delete pages, kind of obvious. Um, burst content that allows you to burst pages out of the document. Say you had you know, a four-page document and you incorrectly added a fifth page, you want that fifth page to be its own document, bursting the content item. Uh, splitting documents, you know, if you had a four-page document and you put your cursor on page three, it would split it into two two-page documents. Okay, so in this particular case, um, I'm going to just execute that disclosing party search again just to show you 
here, um, how it finds that information. So you notice disclosing party doesn't look anything in the content field. So from the action menu, I can then go to my show hits, and it will highlight on the text layer, essentially, where it finds the word disclosing party. So anything in the entire database can be searched by a keyword. Okay, so um, some things you could do here uh, from the action menu, uh, you certainly have your approval. So instead of creating a workflow, you can simply hit the approve or request approval. If I do request approval, it's going to prompt me who I want to have approve it. If I hit the notify, it's going to send an email notification to that particular user. So an email notification might look something like uh, this here. Um, essentially, there's a link when I hover over that, that unique link will launch the browser and show that particular document. That's how people approve remotely. Okay, uh, you have audit information that's simply going to add access, modified, and created dates. Uh, I don't find too much use for that, so I'll move that. We have the full audit trail. It tells you who, what, and when, and from what IP address and what did they change. So it gives you a full kind of idea what's going on with it. You know, you can see that we've added values and such. There's actually 124 different auditing features. Uh, you can change the assignee. This is more applicable to the approvals, which we'll get to with the AP invoice. Um, you can certainly zoom in on a document, so zooming in or out. That is also available with a right click. Zoom. <clears throat> You have the ability to email, and this is a good example of, of an email. So one, uh, you don't have to have a native app Outlook. Uh, you'll notice here we have two buttons now, open an Outlook and send. Uh, if you want to put this into Outlook, you hit that button. Otherwise, you hit send, and it, it just bypasses that. So people that have things like Gmail and non-Outlook um, or uh, desktop-based mail systems. I have uh, three options for email. You have a direct link, so essentially you get a link to the document, and you have to log in, authenticate yourself to see that. And that link can be to a document or to a number of documents. Uh, you have the ability to physically attach the documents, either as a zip or as just a native attachment. So if you want, you know, three PDFs, select that. If you want your Word document, select that. Um, or if you want them all zipped together, you can enable that. Uh, both print and email include either an annotation and or redactions. You'll notice I can't click on it because native doesn't support that overlay. So once I click PDF or TIFF, I can enable those functions. Third option is an external user link. And this is very much like a Dropbox link. So for instance, uh, you want to send an external party that doesn't have to authenticate into Eclipse, but maybe the email size is too large to attach it as a PDF. So in this case, you can send a link to the document. This will physically download it to the person's browser. Additionally, you can apply a password. Uh, this will uh, add additional functionality in terms of securing the document for HIPAA compliance or for other any compliance in terms of sending the email. Uh, you have the uh, modify security. This allows us to modify the different security associated with it. The document will inherit the folder permissions, but you can come in and simply add what user you want and what feature functionality they have. The uh, move to allows you to pick a folder. Uh, the page options, again, if you right click in the thumbnails, you can initiate this. Otherwise, you can initiate it from the action bar. Um, you'll notice thumbnails you can turn off. So if I do that, then the page options become more important. <clears throat> I do like the thumbnails, so I'm going to keep those on. OK, so page options. Um, the ability to print, uh, similar. Uh, you can print as a native, PDF, or TIFF. And then again, whether you want to include certain things. You also have the recognition. I'm not going to get too much in this. This is a, and this will extract the OCR in that particular specific area. And as you see here, it actually put in our contract party field. I'm just going to change that back. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
Okay, um, you got the full records management. This is ideal, certainly, if you have litigation in situations where you have to lock and freeze the documents so nobody can uh, modify it anyway. Uh, you can assign specific, um, as part of your admin function, you can set up the freezes and the unfreezes and the due dates, uh, which allow you to set off a uh, cutoff date, essentially the retention date of that particular document. So it's both for legal holds as well as the ability to do retention scheduling. RE-Q imaging is simply um, if you make a change to the document, such as uh, what we're going to do next with the versions, uh, will allow you to basically uh, re-key the imaging. So we'll re-convert uh, the document. Uh, we'll extract the metadata, uh, do the OCR, et cetera. Uh, save a copy, just when I do that, it allows me to download. So I'm going to use the native, and you'll see it downloads that particular document in our browser. It's kind of an export function. Okay. And then you got scan. So this is the only way if you want to add pages or insert or append to scan, you notice here I can append or insert. Um, I haven't selected any pages to replace, but uh, this is essentially how you would append or insert or replace pages within this. Um, for those that are already electronic, what you're going to use is the merge function. Okay, so from any um, uh, results grid, uh, as we'll get to with, with the searching, you'll be able to apply uh, the merge function. Okay, uh, due date, uh, this is again the ability to apply a, uh, an ad hoc workflow, essentially a due date would then notify somebody and it would show up in your workflow queue uh, that a specific document is due and is expired, et cetera, and somebody can take action on it and you'll notice that will show up as an alert down here in the bottom left. Uh, start page, so if you have a 500 page document and you always want to open it to page 200, you would set the start page to 200. Uh, show document text, this just shows the text layer of this document. This is essentially how we do that keyword searching. By default, when you hit show hits, it will automatically turn on the document text layer. Uh, and then you can just page through, there's only one of one here, but you could page through them using that function. Okay, thumbnails, we went over that. Versioning, which I'm going to go over next. Uh, view native, this just allows you to not have the uh, PNG rendered web viewer. It will essentially allow you to download the document, as you see here. Same, same way as you saw, it's kind of like a... Uh, of the save copy. In, in this particular case, you, the benefit is, is if you do have full Adobe Acrobat, it would show up in here and you'd have all the functionality with full Adobe. This is a global setting, so if, uh, when you have this checked, everything will show in view native. Okay. And then you have your workflow. So we went over some of this, uh, the ability to reassign this, um, remove it or reset the workflow. So if it didn't get good content searching, I can reset the workflow to do another convert to text or something like that. Now you do have your full annotation rights here. So annotations you can apply, you know, please review. So essentially what you do here is you select the item once and then you click once and hold down your left mouse button and then draw a box. And then it will prompt you for whatever you might. Uh, whatever inf information you want to apply. <clears throat> Click on it and it will allow you to change the various colors and all this type of stuff here. You can also fold this up and it will re realign itself. Uh, you have, you know, highlighting, redactions, labels. You could draw boxes. Um, redactions, again, there's, there's a separate. Uh, when you output either print or email or any of those functions, it's going to ask, do you want to Output with annotations and or redactions. So you can choose or select that. Uh, stamp annotations for text and then image annotations. So this is that PIF logo that we had put in earlier. So you simply select it. You'll notice that it gets highlighted in red and then click once and it will then apply. If you select it and then hit the delete key, it will delete that particular document. Okay. So I'm just going to delete these items. Uh, now, uh, one thing to note, if you do use uh, you know, this here, you can show or hide. So this uh, shows or hides 
those annotations. All right, so uh, in this particular case, I want to actually make a change to this. So what we're going to do is our version control here. So when I'm under version, I'm going to hit the check out button. I can put some comments here, and I can hit the OK button. By doing that, you're going to see that it now downloads that document. I click on it. It's going to open and launch Word with that document in it. And I'm going to come in and make some changes here. So I'm going to come in, make this to 2017. And um, uh, we'll put it in the word corp. Okay. And so when I'm done, you're going to notice when I go to the Eclipse, uh, as we noticed before, you, you see here we didn't have um, anything really in there. But now that it knows it's a checked out document, when I do check in, it knows and it says complete. Okay. So when I close that here, it's going to automatically check in that particular document. You can also manually do that through a manual check-in process here. Publish, everybody can see version 2 essentially at that point in time. Now, if you do, you can promote a previous version. So if you made a mistake and you want to promote version 1 to version 2, you can do that. And you see you end up with version 3, which is essentially version 1. And all that gets uh, recorded right within the history here. All of that information. Okay. All right, so um, let's go back to our uh, capture example that we did before with our AP workflow. So we're going to go over here, and this is our AP invoice. So a few things that I did want to mention. Uh, you'll notice with this particular case, as we did with the template in Docstar Legacy, we are prompting a user for some information. But before we do that, we can also use the Zone OCR feature functionality. By clicking this Content Builder here, you're going to notice a third box that gets added. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you'll see here, I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to draw a box around Acme Company. And it's going to automatically extract that information. So one of the benefits of this is creating a zone template on the fly. So the workflow engine can do this. But for instance, if you always have the same, you know, form and the data is in the same area, you could set up, you know, essentially an OCR or barcode template. And then I hit OK here. And you're going to notice that turns purple. So every time this document comes in, it's going to automatically apply that zone template to it. So for instance, that rekey imaging uh, that you saw previously, that would allow it to re-OCR that area if you did want to. I'm going to turn that off. To turn it off, you simply click on that button again. It's going to open up the dialog. And I'm going to be able to hit the delete button. And I'm going to hit yes there. And that clears it. It's no longer going to hit the save button on that. So that is one feature. OK, so um, as you see, in this particular case, there's actually a workflow. So I can type in, actually, a, a value here and this PO number. And what I do is when I do that, I hit the Submit button. And it's going to populate the other fields. So this is what we call a data link. Essentially, it takes one unique variable and then goes out and populates other information. You know, now, you also understand here, um, we have this line items. This was that field group function that we had looked at before. So this is where you can add multiple columns of data. Quantity one, and you can tab through here, and then you can add additional rows, as you see here. And you can delete rows and add rows. And you can also add additional tables. So if you're GL coding, um, you can add multiple tables here into a single document. So anything that's tabular by nature, transcripts, AP invoices, packing lists, you can essentially not only search this information, um, but code it. And this data can also then go into a line of business system. Okay, so uh, that is our line items, or what we call field groups. Again, you can come in here and change up these fields, these columns as well. <clears throat> All right, so in this case, you'll notice that it, it did find a matching PO. I'm going to hit Submit, and this is actually going to escalate for approval. So you know it's approved here. So if I go to my workflow queue, you see it's right under Brent. 
So as Brent, I'm going to go in and then I can actually apply my signature, apply my signature here, move it to where I'd like, and simply hit the approve button. And this will now only save the document, but also apply that particular signature, which is eSign compliant. Okay. So I'm done with that. Um, once I have those particular documents, again, uh, if I want to search, I want to look for ACME. It's going to find all of those particular documents for me and the document right at the top. You'll notice anything that has uh, field groups, line items, you're going to notice a little arrow here. This just uh, demonstrates and shows that line item data that we were looking at previously. Okay. Now, uh, to select all the rows, you select the top box here that selects all the rows. So if I want to execute a merge, I can select all these documents and merge them together into a single document. That's one way of adding pages, uh, as well as the ability to export to CSV or view them all. If I hit view, it's going to give me one of six here, and then I can page through each one. So you don't have to open each one one at a time. You can simply select them all, or move all the way back to one, or move all the way to six. So that's what these buttons are here. Um, we could also search by the PO number in this particular case. So I put in that PO number and again retrieves that particular document. Again you have the edit function so I can come in here and edit any of this information as I see fit um, or I can just not do that. Uh, the export to uh, CSV is a nice little feature. If I do that it just downloads a nice little CSV file with a link to the document. Uh, outside users that do have access you want to you know distribute reports or something like that that are uh, non-graphical. Uh, you'll notice here when I hover over, click here to view, uh, it will show me that particular document. So if I want to see the packing slip, I just click here, and it will allow me to see that particular document. So it's basically a hyperlink to that particular document. It starts a totally new tab. So I can see the invoice and all that, and I can also see the packing slip. And that's all done through this little export to CSV function. All right, I'm going to close that up. Uh, so let's just go back uh, to our grid, grid grid control here, and again, um, from here you do also have uh, the ability to um, print and batch and email. So this is when you email uh, prior, you would only be able to email multiple documents as a zip. Now you can attach them as a native or a PDF or TIFF, and it doesn't have to be in a zip format. So that's a few new features uh, within the core product. All right, so uh, you know that kind of concludes our demonstration today. There's quite a few features that we went over. Um, the capture and indexing, uh, you do have the ability to not only use the office, the print, and the browse uh, scan functions. Uh, so we went over a few things, again, from the capture side. Um, if you do need some additional help with setting that up, we can certainly do that for you. So those are the capture steps Indexing, we saw the ability to use a data link and populate that information uh, with our AP invoice. Uh, we saw the ability to use the lasso OCR to grab the non-disclosure. Uh, we also saw the content searching for the ability to retrieve all matching keywords within a document. Uh, additionally, uh, we saw how we create and save searches. Again, that's available here in the drop-down, anything you configure. Uh, you can configure in this area and can add and save that. Uh, we did also uh, go over all the edit and output functions. Uh, you'll notice the list control, whether it's in our results list or you're in a specific document. Uh, again, your different actions are different based on what type of uh, screen you're in. Okay. We went over within the document view, view control, also our related documents function as well as our line items for tabular data, as well as our history for what occurred in the particular system. So I appreciate everybody's time today and uh, look forward to working with all of you. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to PIF uh, Professional Services at 603-622-2122.